Hey everyone, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all of the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us, as always, is John Campia. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best name movie related show on the planet Earth, coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California. It's the last movie talk of 20. 20- 15. Where has the day gone? Oh, good, good. You're done with your phone. Okay, so yes, <laughs> we're all very excited. And he's eating ch- purple chips. Can't wait, John. Can't purple wait. chips, blue milk. It's a great day. Uh, also here, Christian Arloff. John? Yes. Fonzie? <laughs> <laughs> also here, Mark Ellis. Hey! You guys hear the news? You know why I'm dressed like this? Did you guys hear who's touring stadiums this summer? Ladies and gentlemen, Guns N' Roses is back, and I'm going to get drunk in a stadium parking lot in July. And Country Club oh. is going to be there as well. <laughs> I'm telling you, every time I see that movie, me, Dennis, and Schnepp went to go watch, surprise, surprise, we went to go see Star Wars again last mm-hmm. night, this time in the IMAX 3D. And I, every time I see it, more and more, I am actually thinking you're hiding something from you us. You know who no. you should tell that to? <laughs> Who's that? Tell that to Conjure Club. <laughs> I, 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 saw, I saw it again on Monday night, and my wife was seeing it for the first time. And as Mark appears in the hallway, I, I, I turn to her, I go, look, it's Mark. And she goes, oh, my God. <laughs> See, the, the funny thing is, at fir- the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, that guy looks a little bit like Mark. But every time I see it, it's just like, yeah. is it Mark? It's like, they is should, it Mark? you should go on tour with the guy from Walking Dead, Topher Grace, and that guy. And you guys could be like the brothers. There's four brothers. Be, four brothers. That'd be the best CW sitcom of all time. <laughs> um, hey guys, since it is the last uh, show of the year, we thought we would uh, talk about some some memory stuff, whatever. And most of today's show is really just going to be taking your guys' live Twitter questions today. So you can start firing in Twitter questions now if you'd like. How do you send in a Twitter question if you're watching this live? Simple. First of all, make sure you're following us on Twitter at Collider Video, and then just start firing in your questions. Ashley is going to be pulling some of those questions out and asking them as we go along through the show. And, you know, I it is funny to think that one year ago today, we were still shooting movie talk at our friends over at the stream.tv. I mean, that was just a year ago. And it, because so much has happened since that to now, that it feels like that was a lifetime ago in many ways. I mean, it was just one year and two weeks ago that we had our 100 million view party. Right. Like, right. Yeah, like think about that. Like, that was only then and now. On a different you, channel. On a totally different <laughs> channel. Um, we were under a different umbrella. We were still at AMC then, and, you know, we're still really good friends with AMC and, and love what they've done with us. And now we're over here at Complex and Collider and loving what we're doing over here at Complex and Collider. The growth has been... Kind of stupid. Um, we're hitting numbers now that we we thought would take a lot longer for us to hit. Thank you to you guys for all of that. Um, it has been a damn wild year. What is what's what's some things this year that might stand out to you that you think about most when you think about 2015? I mean, it's, I mean we're talking about the stuff that we're doing here for sure. I mean, I, look, I, I got to always bring up Jedi Council because yeah. the, the idea. I remember walking in to the offices at AMC back and saying, hey, how about we do a Star Wars show? Yeah, "Yeah, let's let's try it out. We did like four episodes thinking, we'll see where it goes. And then now the support from you guys, like the amount of love that we have gotten from, from Jedi Council has been something really special. And obviously, it's the year of Star Wars, so that's actually helped the show a lot too. But being able to talk to, bringing in Tiffany, obviously, was oh, a real been big great. thing. Yeah. Working with Maude was was a lot of fun. Um, so that that's I, I'm just, there's more things that we're looking forward to, obviously, in 2016. But I think that the 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 team that we're able to bring over here and the thing what we've accomplished so far in this space and and, and you're mentioning last year that we were at, we were at the stream and then it does feel like we've been here for so long because we've just we've turned <laughs> yeah. this we've turned this into like a clubhouse and it's. Yep. Like, and I heard you guys the other day on, on the show that you did, um, and I'm actually really looking forward, even though I'll be in a lot of the videos, is that the behind the scenes stuff in the, those videos, yeah. that'll be a yeah. lot of fun, I think, for the fans to see, because they like to see that. And, you know, John was mentioning the Twitter questions. Some of the stuff that you did, that all mailbag behind the scenes stuff, I like hearing that stuff. It's just someone who's on the show, and I, I think uh, the fans responded to it well. So when you're submitting those Twitter questions, ask the behind the scenes stuff, too, because I know she likes picking them up. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's, it's funny. Here's the thing about Jedi Council. I mean, it was like we had some modest targets for Jedi Council and what we want it to be. And now, like, we're, you know, we're constantly over 100,000 views per episode, often peaking over 130, 140, 150,000. 
But I, you know, for the last year, a lot of times when we're out, whether we're at movie theaters or grocery store or wherever, we will often have people come up and say, hey, we watch movie talk, hey, watch movie talk. But now what's happening even every once in a while, just um, on Boxing Day for you Americans, that is the day after Christmas, we were out shopping for my in-laws because I wanted to buy them a new TV. And we go into Best Buy and the salesman come walking up and then his face was like this. He goes, you're John Campia. I said, yeah. And the, instead of saying, I love movie talk, he's like, I watch you guys on Jedi Council all the time. So it's really been interesting yeah. to see how Jedi Council's taken off. And getting Freddie Prince Jr. on the show was something really special. And that was because of the fans. You yep. know, like just the, the, the amount of the support that we've gotten from Lucasfilm itself and from, from Disney. It's, it's been a lot of fun. And we won't say, hey, but, but you guys have tweeted out to a lot of different people of people we should have on Jedi Council. I won't say who, but a couple of those people have actually tweeted back to us and said, hey, let's see if we can work something out sometime. So keep your eyes open for that. Mark, what about you? What are some things that, uh, in your otherwise pointless existence, that you that stands out to you about <laughs> oh 2015? That is what stands out to me. Is it, I haven't been fired from anything in 2015. <laughs> well. But I'm saying, look, you got two days to can me from Jedi Council. It just doesn't look like it's going to happen. So I'm, I'm, I'm playing with house money right now. You know, you bring up people recognize you from Jedi Council council first when i go on the road and do stand up i have so many jedi council and movie talk fans come up to me when i was in tempe when the force awakens came out first of all i came on stage to star wars music because why not i got a standing o from jedi council fans they're all <laughs> over the place they're all standing up and it was hilarious to see them stand up when i come on stage and then look down the theater and then see other people standing up then they're like oh we should talk after the show i'm like shut up i got dick jokes to tell here <laughs> it, it, it's been a great year working with you guys you guys were gracious not both you and christian to let me talk on Jedi Council to let me on movie talk to give me a place where I can sleep it just brings a <laughs> tear to my eye well we joke about you all the time but you are uh, you are one of the most talented guys online you Aww. really are uh, and I you. won't say that again until Never. the Don't last walk. show of 2016 <laughs> yeah. you see Ma I told you <laughs> um, so hey guys with all that oh and also my wife called me last night because my wife was in Vegas last night and she calls me because hey I think you better know something and I said, okay, what's that? She goes, I got a text from your mom. First of all, no man likes hearing that their wives <laughs> right. got a text from their mom. <laughs> right. That's that's not cool. But my wife calls me. She goes, I got a text from your mom. I'm like, yeah? She goes, uh, no, 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 no. Those are my Italian grandparents. She goes, apparently they're going to be over at the house and they're going to be watching Movie Talk Live tomorrow. Just thought you should know. <laughs> So, Ashley, if you wouldn't mind containing it. I will it be on my best <laughs> behavior, no, 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 no. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, no, 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 hope you're watching, hope you enjoy. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's dive in and take some Twitter questions for this last show of 2015. Okay. Ashley, what have you picked Let's out? start with the super PG question for no, 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 no. <laughs> Fernando. You know what, they'll fall asleep after about 15 oh, okay. minutes, right. then we can get into the other stuff later. So we sing them a lullaby? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, first question comes from Fernando Ruiz, and he writes, any news on another Shrek or Big Hero 6 movie? Um, the last time I talked to the directors of Big Hero 6, um, they, they were talking about doing another one. Uh, now, the, the time, look, if Wreck-It Ralph has taught us anything, is that Disney feels no rush to get hot properties out the door. They are very, very, very patient. So I know they want to do another one. I would be shocked if they didn't, didn't already green light it and say, yeah, we're gonna do it. I just don't think they know when yet. So we could be waiting another three or four years. And as far as Shrek goes, that probably all depends on Mike Myers. Right. And, and and you know, if he decides to, you know, get back him and Rick Moranis, man. I mean, I just, I want both <laughs> of those guys back. I, have you guys heard anything? Uh, no, I haven't heard anything on either one, but you think about Big Hero 6 and how what a fun movie was, but also how much it was aiming itself to set up for more adventures, because if you watch the end of Big Hero 6, you're like, oh, Jill, let's have this movie like right now. Shrek seems like an evergreen thing where it can come back into public consciousness at any time, simply because of the stars involved with the vocal town. They're all still around. You can do voiceover and you can age in real life and nobody's going to know in Shrek land. But I think Big Hero 6, if I had to bet, would come first and then you might get another Shrek movie. Yeah, yeah, I think B Big Hero Six should capitalize probably sooner because Sh Shrek, Shrek's one of the. It, it, you're absolutely right. Mike Myers is. It's like Luke. Where is he? Who knows where he is? He's been gone. <laughs> um, but the, and he also the the love guru put him there though. Because yes. the love guru is where Rick Moranis. Well, the love guru was his Kylo Ren, and he sent himself <laughs> right, into exile. Right, absolutely. That. <laughs> as where Rick Moranis just kind of went off on his own because he, you know, he had a lot of personal he had a lot issues. Of stuff, yeah, yeah. He had stuff that he wanted to deal with at home. Um, I would be interested to see what they do. There's a, 
I think it's the same team that worked with How to Train Your Dragon that's over there working on the animation at DreamWorks, yeah? So it would be, maybe they, they would get involved in Shrek. That'd be interesting. Um, but Big Hero 6, I'd like to see, I don't want it to see as much time as, like, say, something like The Incredibles is taking to do a sequel, which I'm very excited about, but it's like 2018 or 19 before we get it. Sooner than later, I think. Shrek hope. is also a property where you look at the talent involved, it was, you know, Mike Myers and Eddie Murphy, which haven't had a an on-screen hit in a little bit right. where you need something to support your family, you know? That, like, whatever that voiceover yeah. check, it's pretty sweet to get. And Mike Myers directed a movie not too long ago called Superman. It was Mensch, a documentary yeah. about Shep Gordon, and it was great. Yeah. And you wonder if he fell in love with more being a storyteller behind the camera as opposed to in front. But even with that said, I think you can convince all those people to come back for another track. And now let me double check. Yes, Eddie Murphy's calendar is open, mm. so he should be able to come back. All right, what's next? Anthony Crosby writes, what studio do you think will make the most money in 2016? WB with the comic book movies and Fantastic Beasts. Well, I mean, oh, yeah, the WB. Look, our first, and it's understandable, everybody's first reaction and our reflex would be to say Disney because Disney has a Star Wars movie coming out and they've got a, a bunch of different things. Don't discount Fox. Now, until Universal this year, don't forget, Fox had the box office record. And they theoretically could be having three comic book movies coming out this year that all have some great potential. I mean, Deadpool is starting to look like it has bigger potential than we thought before. X-Men is X-Men. It's building off the strength of, you know, one of the best X-Men films they've ever made in Days of Future Past. So that's going to be good. And then we'll see how the public, I think the general public is going to react better to Gambit than, say, hardcore comic book movie fans will because Channing Tatum is actually a pretty good name right now amongst that. So, and then amongst all their other slate, but I, I'm going to go Warner Brothers. I'm going to go Warner Brothers will probably win the box office this year. I don't know. What do you think? Disney. I think with, with Jungle Book and Zootopia. And but those are both wild cards. Don't you think to see how how people will react I, to them? I just think they're going to, I mean, it's, it's you, playing off of what Cinderella has done and what Maleficent has done and now Jungle Book's the next one out and the way that it's getting already the, the, with the trailers and the buzz on it I think that's going to deliver. Zootopia I think is going to be very similar not maybe in tone obviously but what, what Inside Out did. I think it's from what we we saw at D23 it looks really fun and I think kids will like it. I think adults are going to get it. I think it's going to make a lot of money and then like Civil War is going to be huge. I think it could be one of the biggest movies if not the biggest movie of the year and then Rogue One. I don't think we'll have the impact that The Force Awakens did because a lot of people still don't know what the hell Rogue One is unless you're like a hardcore fan like us um, or you guys out there. But I think that Disney and probably some other things, Beauty and the Beast comes out 2017. Right? I yeah. believe so, yeah. yeah. So that one's not going to pl uh, play in That's going to be huge, there. man. Yeah. I believe, I wholeheartedly believe that is going to be huge. It's going to be huge. It's just not going to play in, obviously, the 2016. Yeah. But I think that Warner Brothers with Batman v Superman and, and, um, and Suicide Squad and these other movies could, could give it a run for its money. But they had a disappointing year this year. Um, I just think yes, Dis I think Disney's going to take it. Here's the fun game you play: is which tentacle of Disney's empire is going to make the most money? Right. Is it going to yeah. be the Star Wars? Is it because you're still going to have a lot of carryover from Force Awakens in January? Is it going to be that? Is it going to be Marvel, or is it going to be just their animation department? But Force Awakens accounts for 2015. It still counts, but yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. you're still you're raking in and, a lot and just of don't dough forget, either way. Don't forget Disney Pictures, yeah, in its own, because like, they also have got that. Uh, it's not going to be a, mo a huge blockbuster, but that the, the finest hour. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, that, that Sea Rescue. I think yeah. that looks great. Really? I really liked what I saw from that at D23. So, it's going to be a big year. No matter how you cut it, it's going to be a big year. All right, what's next? Awesome sauce, right? I love Broadway <laughs> so much. Any word on a Book of Mormon movie? Have you all seen the play? Stay awesome. Um, there has been. T I, I know we've talked about it on Movie Talk at some point that there, that there was talk about somebody picked up the movie rights for it. I don't remember hearing anything about development. Have you guys heard anything about that? I, not development, and unfortunately not, because I uh, was fortunate enough to see it. I saw it at the Pantages Theater in L.A., and it is phenomenal. I get real nervous when I see live performances. I just, I, I just don't like being in a theater. It just makes me uncomfortable. And all that coming went away. from the guy who makes a living standing Obviously. on a stage <laughs> yeah. in theaters and but performing. I, if I'm not the guy controlling the crowd, I hate it, and I know I'm going to be perfect. I don't know about everybody else. <laughs> it's just seeing what these guys did. I all that fear and trepidation went away within the first minute because it's so funny, but it's more than funny. It tells a really interesting story, and you hear that the guys from South Park are going to be doing, are going to be tackling Mormonism. And you're like, oh, they're just going to shred it to pieces. They don't. They handle it in a very inventive way. I think so. I'm always nervous about Broadway going to the big screen. It has not worked mm. well in the past. If, if you need proof, see Jersey Boys. But it's it, it's one of those things that I think is a big enough name to where it could translate into numbers as far as box office on the big screen. 
I'm curious. I think it'll happen, though. I think it'll definitely happen. I like those guys to be involved in it, obviously, too, because, uh, you know, well, you do have you had something like South Park, the movie, which I love. Then you have Orgasmo. But um, I, I like to see them get involved <laughs> with Book of Mormon. I think it could be I think it'd be a good movie. See, I don't. What about basketball? Yeah, <laughs> I, Bob Costa <laughs> says nipples is pretty yeah. exciting. Josh Gad to me is a guy. He's he has been more miss for me than hit. You know, minus Olaf, and I really thought he was good in that. Thank you for sharing. Um, I thought he was, but there's there's been a lot of times I think that he goes for the comedy that I'm not on board with. I actually thought that the Wedding Ringer I thought he was really good in. Obviously, yeah. A lot of people a lot of people think that that didn't like that movie. I actually wound up enjoying. I think you liked that movie too, didn't you? The Wedding Ringer. Oh yeah, yeah I what, did, and it got bad reviews. It I did. thought I, it was so freaking I en- funny. I enjoyed the movie, and I thought that Josh Gad was good in that. So I, but I actually think that Book of Mormon is a role for him to play, obviously on the on stage, which he did. But I'd love to see him do it on the big screen as well. You know what? Speaking of Josh Gad, and going back to what we were talking about earlier, we we were at D twenty three. He is going to crush it as uh, LeFou. Oh yeah, in Beauty and the yeah, Beast, yeah, because mm-hmm. they they showed us something at D twenty three, whereas him and Luke Evans sitting side by side, like off, off set, they're just in their chairs, right? And they started singing some bars of, oh, what a guy, that Gaston. And Josh Gad, he's going to crush yeah. his LeFou. Yeah. He's absolutely going to crush his LeFou. I cannot wait to see him in <laughs> Don't worry, sp- every question we get today, we're going to manage to tie into Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, what's next? Chris Angel writes, what wow, three? Nice. I know, He's right? Chris Angel watches right. Right. Out Harrison Ford. Yeah. What's up with that, man? He's actually watching from the back of the studio right now. Uh, he writes, what three actresses do you want for the new Charlie's Angels reboot? Uh, Ooh, none. Wow. Um... I don't know. I mean, look, one of the things I really did like that first Charlie's Angels movie with um, Drew Barrymore, Lucy Liu, and uh, I want to say, I almost said Charlie's Theron. Um, Cameron uh, Diaz. Cameron Diaz, yeah, yeah. you know, who's the exact same as Charlie's Theron, right? Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, I really liked the first one they did. I thought it was very creative. I thought um, uh, Chris, not Chris, uh, Damn it, I'm, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, Marty's dad in Back to the Future. Oh, Crispin oh, Glover, Glover, yeah. Crispin Glover was oh, yeah. great as the psycho dude in uh-huh. that. I thought he was wonderful. Mm-hmm. They did a lot of good things. But it was really cool casting. It was different. It was a hodgepodge, but somehow it worked. I, I really, I don't know. I mean. I, I got a cast that'll never happen, but I'll drop the mic after I say it. All right. And that's uh, Emily Blunt, Alicia Vikander, and Margot Robbie. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> I think you can yeah. get one of those in there. You can't get yeah, keep, no think, way you can get all three of them. You can't, but if no. you but if you pair one of those names with Alexander Daddario and Gemma Arterton, you might have a shot I'm in with hell, you. but you know who's going to get speaking cast. Speaking my language. And, you know, the, the one I'd put the money on the most is Malin Ackerman. I just have a feeling she just said, it's a name you haven't heard of that much recently. She's doing something. It's probably going to be a new Charlie's Angels. Here's my mic drop. Is as Bosley, you cast Danny McBride. That guy is my Bosley. That would be interesting. I would go with your list, but just take out Emily Blunt. Now, just I'm just thinking of three-way chemistry here. Take you out Emily Blunt. You don't just take out Emily Blunt. I know, you don't just, <laughs> but I would say, for the for the sake of the chemistry there, remove Emily Blunt, put in Lupita Nyong'o, and there's your Charlie. I'm in. Yeah, Lupita Nyong'o, Margot Robbie, and uh, Vikander. There's... There's a Charlie's like Angels the, movie I, like I think it. we can all get behind. Who are you? How would you guys Who? feel about a comedic Charlie's Angels? They have, they've had it. Isn't that what it's like, been. But with like the current... Melissa like, McCarthy. That's exactly yeah. what I was thinking because of Spy. <laughs> that's where my mind was. Spy and Kristen Wiig and Tina Fey. Like, what about a trio like that? Okay. With all right. Paul you, you might, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening. You might be dropped. That could if be Tina Fey wrote it. If Tina Fey wrote it. If Tina Fey wrote it, yes. yes. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler were together with somebody else, like a Melissa McCarthy, that, that, or, or even Leslie Jones. That sounds like something I'd want to see, too. All right, what's next? All right. Peter McCauley writes, what's happening with the next Purge film? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I know they're going to do it. But yeah. I really don't know anything about it. It is point. happening. And if you didn't see the first Purge really let me down because I love the premise so much. It almost sounded like a great short story that they just tried to extrapolate into a 90 minute film and it didn't work. Even though I love Ethan Hawke, the Purge Anarchy. Oh, my God. That movie's awesome. It's the closest. It's the best Punisher movie I've ever seen. <laughs> Frank really Grill is, is amazing. And if you guys haven't checked that out yet, definitely see the Purge Anarchy. It's one of the best action films of whatever year it came out. So I can't wait to see another Purge now. And, and you know what? It's it's another one of those you can add to the list when people ask you the question. Hey, what movie franchises had a sequel that was better than the original? That you can add the yes. purge. You can yeah. totally add the purge to that yeah. list. I I, I agree. <laughs> it's The Godfather, Star yeah. Wars, and The Purge. Yeah. All right. What's next? Um, behind the scenes, Johnson Oxales writes, "What did y'all do for the holidays?" Huh. 
None of your damn business. Next question. <laughs> uh, worked a lot. Uh, got, got to go back to Anne's family's place for Christmas Day. Yeah. Um, and that was great. And that was pretty much my haul. I'll tell you what I didn't do. I didn't get to go back to Canada this year because uh, we've, we've been busy. But I'm going to go back to Canada mid-January uh, for a bit. So how was your holiday? It was great. My, my wife, were, she tackled this brisket, which we're like, okay, she cooked it like a Wednesday. Nice. Oh, my God. God, Collider was, brisket talk. It was so good. I got so much candy coming in the office, by the way, too. I like um, it. Yeah, but uh, you know, we just had a bunch of friends over Christmas Eve, and then you know, my daughter is is four now, so it was like it was. It's, she's in the prime of Christmas, you know, waiting for Santa, leaving out the cookies. So we had a pretty good. Uh, you know, I can't. Was it? I, you know, it wasn't Christmas. It was your birthday. But um, for whatever reason, I thought it was Christmas. My favorite story that you ever told me about your daughter. You tell some great stories about your daughter, but my favorite one was I believe it was your birthday mm -hmm. and your wife and your daughter had wrapped some presents for you oh. and correct me if I'm wrong but well tell them what what your daughter did when she said she said yes, exactly. she yeah. did it again this year oh, did she, she did, I mean not this for Christmas she but she caught herself like the first the one John's talking about is she she had basically ratted out what my wife had got me for my birthday but for Christmas my wife told her you can't tell that what you what we got him this time <laughs> and so she goes we had all the presents she's like oh don't forget to open your pill that you know, oh, she's like, she's yeah. caught herself. She's like, I can't, I can't say. Was, it. On yeah. your birthday, they had it wrapped, and your daughter points at the wrapped presents. Dad, open the coffee maker next, or right? Yeah, yeah, it was the coffee maker. She's like, open <laughs> the coffee maker, but she and but she caught herself the second time, and she's like, I almost told you what it was, but she did. It All warms right. my heart to hear how close you are with your family. I drank a bottle of Sailor Jerry and stared into a fire. <laughs> Awesome. No, I was actually home in Virginia for a week, too, and it was cool uh, getting to introduce my family to Star Wars because they actually jumped the gun. Me and my older sister, my younger brother, we plan on seeing it together. I was, I was expecting together. to say introduce my family to my girlfriend. No, no. <laughs> they, don't, they have no idea. Going. She didn't make the trip, <laughs> right. but they met her Thanksgiving, so I'm cool there. And uh, seeing Star Wars with, with my repeat viewings and seeing it for the first time with my sister, it was pretty, pretty cool to check out. And Christian talks about his wife making brisket. My sister, she's a great cook. She made carne seca meat. Not Carne asada, carne seca. You ever been to Arizona? You know what I'm talking about. It was phenomenal. What do you do, Ashley? Um, I made Christmas dinner by myself for the very first time. Really? You just all yes, by yourself? I wow. did this whole all second. by this whole myself. This idea of you cooking something adds like a whole Are new layer to my me? perception of you. Are you, you made serious? the entire, That's... was it Domino's or Papa John's? Yeah. <laughs> it was actually very funny. It was Shakey's. Thank you very much. Um, you think she's an animal? <laughs> midway through, I realized that I was um, seasoning the bottom of the turkey rather than the top. So I was doing the legs instead of the breast. It was a mess, but it came out delicious and my parents were thrilled thoroughly impressed yeah. and now I have to look, cook for them like once a week right. or and something. Then five minutes purpose. after that she realized it was a watermelon instead of a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone threw up. Yeah. All right, what's next? Um, next question. Safuidin Salhuddin writes BB-8 or R2-D2? R2-D2. BB-8 is great uh, yeah. though. I mean, look. He's great. One, that's, I think the very first thing I said to Anne coming out of The Force Awakens when we were at the premiere was they fulfilled the promise of BB-8. Not so much Captain Phasma, we won't go into things, but that what what the marketing of Star Wars is promising us, this cute new droid that's just gonna steal your heart. That's what, kind of what the marketing promised. They delivered. So me seeing, saying R2 is in no way casting shade on BB-8. BB-8 is awesome, but it's still R2. It's R2. I mean, he's one of the classic characters of all time. Even the the pop that the, the when the, the audience went nuts, like even uh, there's a part when he does show up in yeah. The Force Awakens. Uh, it, because there's respect there for R2, but BB-8 was great. Yeah, yeah and, and BB-8 was was phenomenal what his job was in the movie, which, you know what's great is that he didn't he wasn't annoying. And you worry no. about a new character yep. in Star Wars, particularly one that's going to be utilized for comic relief as some of their job, was not annoying at all. I loved him. The thumbs up was one of my favorite parts of the movie, <laughs> but he just wasn't, uh, he, he doesn't serve the same purpose in that universe as R2-D2 did. Yet. Because when you watch, yet, but when you watch the first six Star Wars movies, R2-D2, literally saves everybody's ass multiple times and <laughs> bb8 is great he's a great disc holder he's great at maneuvering away from danger when he needs not to give too, anything too much away but he's not r2d2 and never will be all right what's next valadis katsikas writes which was funnier sisters or road chip Oof. sisters i you know i finally got around to seeing sisters you know what it's 
It has its moments. Sisters, I thought, look, it's nowhere near as good as what I wanted an Amy Poehler and Tina Fey movie to be, like when we first heard about it. But fortunately, my expectations got lowered a lot when I started seeing the trailers. But it didn't actually end up being as bad as I thought it could be, and I thought it had its moments. So I'm, I'm going to say Sisters. I'm going to say Sisters as well, primarily because I haven't seen Road Ship yet, like Christian had to. I, I but, but Sisters, well, I, I didn't rate it fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. It's still a movie that I got something out of. I enjoyed watching. I didn't hate myself for sitting in a theater simply because I thought it was nice to see Amy Poehler and Tina Fey switch roles that you would expect them to play plus can we please give Bobby Moynihan a shot at being a movie star he was so <laughs> he funny was stole nearly every scene he was in in Sisters let's give that dude another shot if you're asking me what's a funnier movie the Sisters is better than those filthy shit rats so like <laughs> I, I, I uh, my grandparents I, are watching oh sorry sorry no, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I yeah it, it's it's not funny it's not it's 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 torture and like you said Bobby Moynihan is is, is funny there are some funny moments I just overall didn't like was that there movie. anything that made you like giggle in road chip like anything that you're like okay that my was my daughter good joke. laughing but that's not part of the movie yeah that's a yeah <laughs> wow yeah. all right what's next Alan Perez writes will we ever get a tour of the studio yeah, actually, somebody asked that on. Um, I did it on Periscope. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, well, we'll do a we'll do a legit. I think what we're gonna do hey. is we're gonna hey. get God, just a slap in the face. <laughs> yeah. We are going to get uh, probably a friend of ours to actually come in and probably do like a full like fifteen minute documenting a day around the Collider Studios uh, and you know from it's starting at like 6 a.m. to it's finishing at like 10 p.m. and uh, probably like follow us around and shoot us for the day and we'll get that put together in the next couple of months you'll probably see that so uh, so yes it will be coming or you can watch Yahoo's periscoping for whatever reason you know can, can we please do this though is when Johnny the Yahoo to you buddy <laughs> <laughs> when it's given the tour of the studio, what I'd like to do is like when it comes into Christian and I's office, we can do like the newsroom, like the cheesy newsroom thing where like I'll be typing, then I woke up and I'm like, <laughs> no. or, or just turn around real, or just turn around and scoot. <laughs> and make sure you got a cigar in your mouth at the time. <laughs> and get an actual yeah. typewriter. Get an actual you typewriter. Classic, San Diego. All right, what's next? Mr. Woolums writes, what do you guys think was the best year for movies in the last six years? Oh, oh man, geez. Really, I think it was. I, yeah, that's something. Um, yeah, this year was good, though. This was a very good yeah. year. This here's was a very here's good where this year. year let me down is with the Oscar contenders. While some of the acting performances were phenomenal, the movies overall didn't hit me quite as hard as I wanted to. Having said that, this is the only year out of the last six that we had a Star Wars movie come out. So I want to give that. I, I think last year was better for Oscar contenders between Birdman and Boyhood, Theory of Everything, Imitation Game. We didn't have those movies this year. But we got Star Wars, and we got Mad Max, and we got some other movie. Ex Machina surprised me. So this year was pretty Spotlight sweet. Spotlight was and some, yeah, was really yeah. and some surprises, you know. Too, but but you know the thing is, I agree with you. I think that the Oscar movies this year, the performance has been out of control, and there haven't been too many. I, I really like the Hateful Eight, but I, there haven't been a lot of takeaways from this season. The Revenant I thought was a good one too, but yeah, overall right. the entire year has been, I think, better than most years. Like January, there may, I mean, we hardly get anything, but I think there was one or two in January that said, well, that that's better than it should have been. And then February, March, April, there was a couple of gems that came out each month, more so than in the years past. So I think this year was pretty good. I have to go back and look at the other ones to compare it. But I was very happy with 2015. <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to keep taking some of your Twitter questions in just a moment. But before we go any further, since it is the last show of the week, it is time for us to make our box office predictions brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. Now, it's probably this is an interesting week because nothing new opens in wide release this week. Right. So I'm going to give you my I'm going to lead this off. I'm going to give you my box office prediction. I got last week's box office in front of me. I think it's going to be very similar with a minor change. I do believe coming in at number one will be Daddy's Home. No. Uh, mm. Star Wars The Force Awakens will continue to be number one, obviously. Uh, Daddy's Home will continue to be number two. Joy, I believe, is going to drop out of the third spot. I actually think Sisters will overtake Joy. Mm. I think Sisters will overtake Joy. Uh, and Sisters will actually, when it was all adjusted, Sisters actually went up from week one to week two by 1.9%. Wow. It actually went up. I see Joy dropping by at least 50%. So I think Sisters will be in third spot. I believe Joy will be fourth. And I believe Alvin and the Chipmunks will be fifth. So Star Wars Force Awakens, Daddy's Home, Sisters, Joy, Alvin and the Chipmunks. I have a similar list where I have Star Wars, obviously, at number one, 
Daddy's Home, uh, Sisters at three as well, but then I'm throwing Chipmunks at four and then Joy at five. So, okay, that's... Yeah, because Chipmunks only dropped 8%. I think that it's going to be... Because it's, it's that same thing. There's nothing to take kids to see this weekend, and I think Joy, the people that wanted to see it, saw it. See, I'm giving Sisters the boot. It's, t it's either that or Joy is going to be my number five, so I'll give the edge to Joy because I think people around this time of year, they want to start seeing what might be considered Oscar contenders. Even though I don't think Joy is that, it's more so than Sisters. At number four, I'm going to throw a movie I didn't hear out of your guys' mouth, Concussion. I think it's a movie that's going to be on people people's minds they want to go see it in theaters they want to have a conversation about it at number three i'm going to give the shit rats chipmunks a little bit of a shout out <laughs> number two is going to be daddy's home and number one is going to be my film star wars the force awakens you know what? i have to totally adjust i have to totally adjust my my thing i think both you guys will want to as well because i totally forgot yesterday uh, the Weinstein Company announced that they have moved ahead their plans, because I don't think the 70 millimeter thing has been doing well for them. Mm -hmm. They have moved ahead their plans. Hateful Eight actually goes wide starting today. Oh, wow. Well, Hateful okay, Eight yeah. goes wide ah. today. Well, boy, does that change. Yeah, I totally changes. forgot yeah. about that. So... I will go number one, Star Wars. Yeah. Number two will be Hateful yeah, Eight. Number three, yep. Daddy's Home. For me, number four, Sisters. So, and number five, Joy. Yeah, so I think we're all... The, the Hateful Eight is, all, is, all, is number two for all of yeah. us. So same for all of us, I, just Hateful Eight and number but two. But I would knock out Joy, down. though, and I would put uh, Chipmunk. So right. I, I would say that it's, that it's Hateful Eight at two, Daddy's Home at three, Sisters at four, and then Chipmunks at five. Because you were going for Chipmunks because you thought it was the only thing people could take their parents to, but now you know Hateful Eight is coming. Right. Well, they're kids, so, yeah. There's yeah, a lot of kids that should see that. Take lots of your kids to go see that. Tell the truth. Truth. Yeah, that good good message. What's yours for the kids. now? Thank you. Huh? What's yours now? Same I, I thing. Just, I, just pop everything knocked, down. I knocked Joy up. Okay, so the hell out of there. So Lawrence. concussion is five for you. You got enough statues on your mantle. Give somebody else a chance. <laughs> <laughs> concussion number five. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get back to the Twitter questions. All right. Kimberly Sutherland writes: Have you guys heard anything about the East of Eden remake with Jennifer Lawrence? Is it still happening? <laughs> Whew, let me. Uh, you guys can talk about that. No. I th I thought it was still happening, but no, I, I thought I, I haven't heard anything. Oh, I, I just thought well, you said it very angrily. Well, I, I, had to. I thought it got postponed because she signed on to do that movie with Chris Pratt, that outer space movie where they're going out and, and then passengers. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which sounds really cool, by the way. So I, I just thought East of Eden got postponed, but I thought it was still in production. Yeah, the last I I honestly haven't heard anything about it all year. Like like the last I heard about it was in 2014. Is mm. any real news I heard about? So I honestly don't know where it stands right now. Me either. All right, what's next? All right, Ali Hamza writes, any news on the Elton John biopic? We have been talking about this Elton John biopic for years. Yeah. Tom Hardy got t cast forever ago to play him. So I don't know if they're in production right now. I, I don't know if they wrap production. I don't know if it got shelved. I simply do not know where it stands right now. I don't now. know what's happening with it, but get it done. That's a movie that Tom Hardy, uh, that's a movie you guys are talking about, Leonardo DiCaprio getting like last year saying, if he, when he does Revenant, Oscar time. I say if Tom Hardy does Elton John, you're looking at Oscar nomination just because it it's fits the bill. Biopic, it'll probably come out in that time. He the, Last night, I was watching Revenant again, and I still think that he should, he should be nominated for Best Supporting Actor. He probably won't. But the way that dude commits to characters, he's one of those actors that transforms. He doesn't just, it's not just Tom Hardy doing something. He becomes the person. So he will become Elton John. And this is one of those like Sacha Baron Cohen playing uh, Freddie Mercury, which isn't going to happen yet, situations because it seems like the actor really wants to tackle that part. And from yeah. every interview we've seen, Tom Hardy has talked about playing Elton John, and I think it's something that really is on his bucket list to do. So I would love to see. He seems like the right guy to be playing Elton John. Obviously, there's a lot you can do with his life. Get F. Gary Gray to direct it. It's something that I definitely want to see. I'm a huge Elton John fan, too, so I want to see a movie about that dude's life. Well, now, if it is still happening, it ain't happening for a while mm -hmm. because they just announced Tom Hardy is going to be, surprise, surprise, in the new Christopher Nolan film, mm -hmm. uh, Dunkirk, and that's coming out in 2017, so you're if it is still going, it's going to happen after that. Hmm. Uh, as of right now, at least on his IMDb page, he has nothing listed for it anymore. So it may be oh. off the books. We'll have to wait and see. All right, what's next? Sebastian Jimenez writes, what do you think about a hypothetic reboot, remake, sequel to Prince of Persia? I think it deserves a second chance. No, it doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. Uh, I, that reboot, sequel, whatever, uh, no. Prince of Persia is a reboot. It'll all depend on um, a couple of things. And those two things are Warcraft and yeah. Assassin's Creed. If Warcraft, and we talked about this about Fallout the other day, somebody asked a question about Fallout. If Warcraft and Assassin's Creed both do pretty good critically and financially, then you're gonna see a floodgate open. 
like just a floodgate of video game properties going back in. Prince of Persia is a cinematic uh, kind of uh, setting that you can very easily do something. Although I think we will all agree that it is very, very important that if you're gonna do a Prince of Persia remake, once again, you hire a pasty white dude <laughs> to play the Prince of Persia. <laughs> I never understood that, I, I, I really did. I, anyway, so I think it's possible uh, a sequel, never. They're never yeah, going to follow yeah. up that piece of garbage. But uh, as a reboot, maybe, but it all depends on how these video game movies do. I, I actually found myself enjoying the Prince of Persia movie, and it didn't, when we did our top 10 worst video game movies of all time, it didn't crack the list, mainly because there's so many awful, like, worse video game movies. But I, I, I don't need to see a sequel to it. My question is, and I don't know if you guys know this, if you're bigger gamers than me, is has Prince of Persia continued a successful run as a video game? Like, are there new Prince of Persia movies getting made? I or is think, it still something you you're mean, dusting off from, like, the PlayStation 1 days? I think the movie killed the video game franchise. Yeah. It might have. Um, I'd like to see a, not a sequel, but a, a remake. I think that there's there's something pretty interesting inside of that, the mythology. Uh, it, it, it had a lot of cool things in that movie that could have been executed better yeah um and i like jake gyllenhaal but i agree it shouldn't be the prince of persia it makes no sense a uh, quick history lesson for you do yes. you remember because this is back in the days christian and i saw that movie together and this is back when we weren't necessarily being totally legal at the movie theater so we we snuck into another movie after prince of persia do you remember oh, that movie not at all sex in the city 2 which made the prince of persia look like the french connection <laughs> oh yeah that's true uh so yeah remake <laughs> all right what's next Mr. Willems writes, what is the saddest movie you've ever seen? Oh, God. Uh, there's a lot oh, of them. Young, I got to bring up Young at Heart. <laughs> yeah, the old people singing movie. God, yeah. that got you. Really hey, did. look, old, old, old one is my dad's all time. I believe it's still my dad's all time favorite, but easily to me the saddest movie I've ever seen. Old Yeller. Oh, yeah. Old My dad, my dad refuses to watch it because of what it did to him the first time. But you know, yeah. the, the one, the first movie I ever remember actually crying at as a kid was Mask with Eric Stoltz. Oh, not, right, yeah. not the Mask, Mask oh, that's with Eric Stoltz. One, yeah. That and that, share, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Fantastic Four is up there. Um, you, you know what I'm actually going to say is is uh, Dumbo is the one that makes me cry the most, which is embarrassing because I think the saddest movie I've ever seen that does have a little bit of hope is The Impossible. The movie that's based on a true story about surviving a tsunami, and I watched that movie, and I didn't cry during it, and I felt awful afterwards because this damn cartoon elephant that's never existed right. can make me weep, yeah. and yet uh, something based on a real tragedy, I'm just like, yeah, that was a good movie. Well, I think the one that made me cry the most this year was Terminator uh, Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like if you want one that's really going to grab your emotional innards and pull them through your anus, um, <laughs> you watch. Light you yelled at me for Nona. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, yeah, sorry. Um, what you really got to do uh, is watch the Roberto Benigni film, Life is Beautiful. Mm. Like, oh, like, yeah. holy crap. Yeah. Like that, that will kill you. That movie will absolutely kill you. Oh, All right. oh, I got, okay, so so Christian saw this movie and then said, dude, you need to see this. And I'm like, what? He's like, watch it by All yourself right. so you don't embarrass yourself. And it was Marley and me. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching the movie, uh, yeah, and it's yeah. almost like holding up a mirror to the Ellis's life as like my matriculation for being a kid. We had a great German Shepherd named Augie. And the end of Marley and me, holy. I get you. God. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, what's next? Uh, movie read views writes Fantastic Beasts is J.K. Rowling's screenwriting debut. Do you think that's wise? Um, sure. Why not? I mean, look, normally I would say, hey, don't give a, a, a first time director a major tentpole franchise. I would, I would probably also say don't give a major tentpole project to a first time writer. However, there's a little asterisk to that. It's the person who wrote it in the first place. It's the person whose work this is based on. It's their world. Um, not to mention, if she, like, let's say Warner Brothers even wanted to do a different screenwriter, it's JK's property. And so if she goes, oh, yeah, yeah, we can make new ones, but only if I write it, then what are they going to do? Yeah. They're going to say, nah, we, we'll take a pass then. No, they won't. Yeah, this isn't Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah, exactly, no exactly. And this, this is someone, not only has she, it's her property, she's been established for a while doing this and knowing the world. She also did a lot of work on the previous Harry Potter scripts. Um, she knows she's been around those scripts. She knows how to write scripts. It's not the first time that one of her movies is being turned in. It, it has to be written for a script. She knows how to do it. So I think I actually am very encouraged that she's writing the script. 
They, it's a fair question to ask, though, because they are very different things. I mean, the Venn diagram of writing a screenplay versus writing a novel overlaps somewhat, but also the fact that you have David Yates directing right. it, who isn't any schlub. He knows his Harry Potter universe, too, and he's a guy that kind of has the power to take a script and be able to realize what scene might work or what might need to be tweaked a little bit. So I have total faith in this movie. The fact that J.K. Rowling is doing the screenplay does nothing to dissuade me from that. Yeah, I mean, she, is the, she wrote all the stories as it is, and I highly doubt this is a situation of J.K. sitting alone in her office period i'm sure she's going to have some people helping her out with just the, the little mechanics of screenwriting but her writing the screenplay it's her story she knows this world better than anybody else she is a writer so yeah i have no problem and you also have to know that you know david yates and jk rowling have worked with each other very, successfully successfully very well in the past so yep. they the, the fact that they both said yeah want her to write yeah want him to direct that's encouraged i think she can afford final draft is, is right. what we're saying right. All right, what's she next? bought the company, <laughs> Um, One of the OGs, Bazinga Guy, right? It's wow. favorite foodie movie. Foodie movie. Mm. Oh, okay, so Ratatouille has to be up there. Chef. Uh, Chef has to be up there. Uh, the Thousand Foot Journey, which was just, just out mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, was really good. Um, actually, it's a bad movie, but not bad for a foodie movie. The one with Aaron Eckhart and uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones. The romantic comedy surrounding oh, the restaurant. Yeah. You, the, the one you have a poster of in your bedroom. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> How do you know what his bedroom looks like? <laughs> yeah, first, oh, we're good friends. Yeah, yeah, right. He's been sleeping in my closet. Um, so eat, that's not bad. Eat, Love, Pray is another movie. Uh, okay movie. It's Eat, Pray, movie. Love. If you mess up Whatever. the order, you ruin the whole mojo of what you're trying to do. Uh, you know what else I'll throw at you? It's, it's not known as a foodie movie, but the scene that made me makes me more hungry than any other scene in movie history is the prison scene in Goodfellas oh, when they yeah. get all oh, those right. Italian yeah, yeah, ingredients yeah, yeah, to cooking yeah, yeah. that meal. Oh, smell the sauce coming yeah. through yeah. the TV. Yeah. Well, um, chocolate. I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> How about Willy Wonka the chocolate factory? Yeah, That's okay. I'll go. That, uh, gives me, that gives me. We're reaching. All right, let's take a few more. Right, Captain Cold writes, why are we not going to have a TV talk? Um, the demand. The, okay, yeah. So, so here's the thing. What do we, what do we, there's 500 TV shows on. I mean, it's like the world of film is big enough as it is. What what do we talk about? I mean, I only watch, I only have time to watch about seven or eight or nine shows. Um, so what do you what do you do with a TV talk? Like I said, it, it's, it's a simple matter of, and then no matter what, there's gonna be people pissed off because there's gonna be shows we don't cover. So what are we supposed to do on a TV talk as well? Review every week's episode of every show that's on TV? Do we, like it's, it's just something that's outside the realm of what we do. I'm quite comfortable right now with our, we're taking baby steps into the into the realm of TV by doing recap shows to start. Um, and if you know we continue to be successful, that's a big if, if we continue to be successful in that, we'll continue to do recaps and we'll expand the number of recaps. And we, we're gonna be doing a, a Game of Thrones one for sure coming, maybe Mr. Robot when it comes back, maybe a few others. And expanding that, but I feel much more comfortable doing that than doing like a TV talk because I, what's the scope then? How big is your scope? Do you just talk about the 10 biggest shows on TV right now? Well, then you piss off millions of people. Do you talk about the 40 biggest TV shows? Well, then that's just too much. So yeah, for me, I just don't see TV talk being something really realistic or feasible for us to do. I think doing recaps is probably the best approach for us right now. I'm open to being convinced otherwise. I just, that's where I'm thinking right now. What so, are you guys it's a great point, too, because you look at the movie landscape where there's a lot of movie news and you have, usually it averages out to three new movies a week. So that's the homework to do. And it takes up a lot of our time seeing those movies, digesting them, incorporating them into what we already have in our movie knowledge. TV, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of content you can watch every week and we just don't have the time between movies and all the live sports i'm watching that's something we can talk about but other than that you just don't hey, have we're time. still talking about doing a ufc show we're right. still like, well, seriously talking about doing a the UFC only stuff. way i could see it working is with the new team and it's, a, it's an entirely new team it's a yeah. new it's a new team but i think you could do it if you did it to where because yeah there's a lot of materials out there but i mean there's also a lot of materials in the in the movie world as well too with there's there's tons of things that we don't cover in movie talk as well too but i think that you could do stuff with casting you could do stuff with the uh the big ratings things that things that are failing uh actors that are characters that are that are working but i i, I you know as far as working means that, that people are responding to things that aren't working but i don't think that that's this team i think that it would be have to be an, a new tv team that you know like a, like a new show like the same thing that you would do when you bring in a, a brand new team for a sports show it's like 
I think it could work. I do think it could work, but it's just a matter of once we grow more. But I, I don't I don't think that you're I think that eventually it, it may happen. I'm just that's just that's just me being uh an optimist. Well, let's put it this way. It, like I had a, I have a few people you know on the chat board saying, "Well, John just get other people to do it." Yeah. It's funny how people in Los Angeles don't want to work for free. It's it's crazy, I know, but you know, it's it we're talk we would be talking about a math cuz I think Christian absolutely nailed it. If we had an entire, we were able to add a new staff of five new people, um, and do, but that's that's huge, huge dollars. That's big money, and we just don't have those resources right now. We are pretty comfortable where we are right now. But like I said, I'm open to being convinced otherwise as our circumstances change. But for now, that's kind of where we are. But I love the question. It's a great question. Yeah. All right, Niche writes: Are you going to do a Bollywood movie talk? No. Um, there was a time when we were still at AMC, that we had a Bollywood specific show uh, on the chalkboard. We were, actually as a matter of fact, it was a little bit further along than you even know. That we were looking at really expanding our stuff and at AMC theaters, Bollywood was stuff that AMC was really kind of cornering the market on in North America as far as major theater chains go. So we were looking at, um, you know, meeting the needs of that community. And so we had started to put together something for Bollywood. Again, it was gonna be adding more people to our team, people who actually knew what they were talking about. But once we left AMC and that was no longer our prime directive, you know, as you will, that kind of fell off the books. It's just not something that would appeal to our audience that we have at this point. We don't have the, the resources to bring out people who would have expertise in that area. So, uh, hey, never say never, never say never, because I still think it was a very interesting idea, but because we're no longer with AMC, our needs have changed. So that kind of came off the books at that point. Do you guys have anything you want to add? Mm. I would see, I, I think that one, it could be could come into existence before TV talk because it's just not as massive of an undertaking, but you're right, there is a lot of potential there. All right, what's next? Chatham writes, who is your favorite Canadian film slash TV star? Rachel McAdams. Rachel McAdams is awesome. Um, Martin Short, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Gosling, uh, Seth Rogen. Uh, there's a lot of really good ones right now. Um, oh, righty I'll, then. I'll, I'll go <laughs> uh -huh. Jim Carrey. Is. Yeah. I, I think right now I'll go Ryan Reynolds. I think right now Ryan Reynolds is my favorite at the moment. I take the two former couple, the, the former couple, Gosling and uh, McAdams. Yeah, That's pretty good. Great, yeah. yeah, I'd also. I mean, I th there's so many great comedy superstars that come from Canada, and I would throw Rick Moranis and John Candy and Dan Aykroyd in that. Martin list as Short. Well. Oh yeah, yeah. Martin, Martin Short. Short is maybe the best panel guest of all time on late night TV shows. He's but he's a monster. I must say. Went to my uh, <laughs> from my hometown, by the way, Martin really? Short from Hamilton, Ontario. Yep, yeah, hometown. All right, what's next? Geraldton MJJ writes, "How do you feel about people who don't share your opinion about certain movies?" Get him out of here. <laughs> no, I, I look. Here's I say this all the time, and I totally believe this. Like, what makes being a film fan fun is that we all have different opinions about movies. I mean, we, we all sit down in our offices and talk about how great Star Wars is, but the more fun conversations are when movies come up around our offices about movies that we have different opinions on. Those are the fun conversations. And look, I will trash, for instance, the prequels as the bags of shit that they are from now until no, the no. cows come home. <laughs> yes, sorry, yes. Sorry, no, no. Um, <laughs> Uh, so please don't take me out of the inheritance. Um, so I will, I, will talk, <laughs> I will talk crap about those movies till the cows come home. But you will never hear me say a disparaging word about somebody who likes the prequels. I'll, like, I'll go, look, you're in a different universe than me, but I'm glad that there's somebody who can appreciate it. If you like it and you're a film fan and you get joy out of it, then I'm legitimately happy that it brings joy to some people. That's great. I, so like, no, look, like dating and relationships, I told the story before, in my early, in the early days of Anne and I dating, I discovered she had never seen Star Wars, and I <gasps> legitimately, she'll tell you this story herself, I legitimately straight up told her, this goes no further. <laughs> this relate this relation we have goes no further until you watch those movies. So, so, yeah. I'm like, that's a different You don't have to like thing. them, just watch them. Yeah, you don't even have to like them, you just gotta, you gotta at least watch them. But other than that, I, I'm totally good, and I actually have fun with it when people have different opinions about movies. I do too. Like one of the and Mark and I have been talking about this for a year. Like when we do reviews and we put them on schmoes, like it's I 
always encouraged. Like I love seeing comments like when we, people don't agree with what we're saying. It's like, hey guys, I guess we, we might have seen a different movie because here's why I like this. I love those comments. We have conversations about it. It's the morons that write like, you guys are, are stupid because you didn't see this the way I did and you're dumb. And it's like, wait a minute. Have a conversation about the actual movie, and I, I'm I'm totally with you. Like when someone is, doesn't see eye to eye, because we don't know. I don't know what you went through when you were younger, as far as why you maybe like a particular movie, what sentimental values it had, and that's kind of shaped your opinions over the years. So who am I to say that the way you looked at a movie is wrong? Like you, yeah. your personal experiences and things that you've gone through in your life make you look at things differently when you're watching movies. And that's how everybody is. Certain things, certain experiences are similar and certain things are different. You see, Mark and I disagree on movies all the time. Uh, we yell at each other on screen all the time, but we have a, a, a conversation about it. Yeah, and we also want to say, like, if you disagree with me, there's no shame in being wrong. You just have to go home, <laughs> sit in a car, think about your life, and come on back when you realize that Sucker Punch is really good, that Mirror oh, Mirror is great, you got me and on that, that Sucker Dread Punch, by the is way. just not a good movie. You Kool-Aided me on uh, that Sucker Punch You didn't punch like thing. Dread? Mm, no. The Dread's new one, really? Awesome. Oh, that's, that's interesting. You're wrong. You're absolutely dead wrong. <laughs> Everything uh, you guys just said. <laughs> well, no, but, no. It, Take it, it back. It goes back to this, too. Like, I, I tell the story all the time. Like, my favorite film critic of all time um, is Roger Ebert, but it's but I'm going to tell you right now. At least fifty percent of the time, I either liked the movies he disliked or I didn't like the movies he did like. What made him a great film critic to me was not that he said the things I agree with, was that he was so good at articulating his experience with the film that it gave me new appreciation for it and helped me understand my own position a little bit better. So it's not about finding and talking to people who have your same opinions and your same views. It's about talking to people about movies who have different views that are just really good at expressing and articulating why those differences are there because it helps enhance my enjoyment of my own position, understanding their position, and it just makes being a movie fan all more fun. So. Yeah. All right. We got time for two more questions and we'll call it a day. Okay. Steve. No, we'll call it a year. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Depressing. <laughs> Steve Noakes writes, do you think they will ever do another Anchorman movie? No. Mm. No, the last one, while I, I had some great laugh out loud moments of the last Anchorman, I just rewatched on YouTube the fight scene of Anchorman 2, <laughs> which was so ridiculously over the top. But the people who show up in it are just crazy. But it doesn't beat the fight scene of the first Anchorman movie. Nothing about Anchorman 2 topped Anchorman 1. Uh, the RV rolling over scene was hilarious Sorry. too. But I, I think they did it. And I think they kind of regretted doing it, to be honest with you. I would love to see that whole crew get back together again for something else. Kind of like the way, um, oh, what's... Uh, the, a Fish Called Wanda, that the way the same crew who made A Fish Called Wanda came back and did that movie about the zoo or the zoo animals, I, I can't remember what it was. But if they got, the, I'd love to see any movie with Will Ferrell, uh, Steve Carell, Paul Rudd, Paul Rudd David Cochner, um, yeah, that whole crew back together. I'll watch that all day, but I don't think we're going to see another Anchorman. I think they, I think they did everything that they needed to do. I, I actually really, I, I know I'm one of the few people that really enjoyed uh, Anchorman too. It's, it's I not, enjoyed it's, it too. It's not a great movie, but I got a lot of laughs out of it. Um, but I think it's over. I loved Anchorman too. And, and you realize how hard it is to make a comedy sequel. I felt the same way about that that I did Ted too, where it might not have been a great film. It probably wasn't, but I laughed so hard at both those movies that it makes me think. It, 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 as of right now, they're their party line would be no we're not going to do another one but if they came if somebody came up with a script that's good enough or an idea that is funny enough to do i think they could pull it off but i agree with you i think you're going to see them as their characters in something down the road maybe like ben stiller's making a movie that's a comedy and they just all show up for a scene you're going to see them all together in those characters somewhere down the road all right and Final question of 2015. Uh, well, now I feel pressured. All right. Joey Current writes, favorite movie not marketed for your demographic? Great. Oh, great question. question. Yeah. Yeah. Like all time? Guess so. Oh, I'll t I got to think about that one. Oh, God. Th then you're going to go back to uh, Bridge Over the River Kwai, Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. Um, you don't think those are our demographic, though? Like, I think those, like a war movie or like Lawrence of Arabia, which is like, so you know, a journey like that. I think that. you're thinking about age bracket. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not thinking I'm th generationally I'm thinking, like, necessarily. I, I don't know. I think it's like if you put out Bridge Over the River Kwai, and it is not like it is a it is a movie set in war time. Right. But it is not a 
Fair. War. Right. It's not a battle storm the beaches right. kind of thing. So I put it's, bridesmaids like something like that. Like bridesmaids to me, I I thought bridesmaids was going to be raunchy comedy. That is kind of look. I, that's kind I, of up your. That's out. kind of our. But, but it's Come not on. just raunchy comedy. I saw that movie and I thought it was just going to be a a girl comedy that I was not going. To, I thought it was going to be geared just towards women. I thought it was going to be completely geared towards women. That I I saw the trailer. I thought it was just going to be the stereotypical. Oh, I lo- I was hooked movie. from the trailer. I yeah. did not, and I thought it was going to be a movie that I just did not care about, and I was completely dead wrong. It was a movie that was geared for comedy fans not not men not women just comedy fans and so to me i thought maybe i don't know maybe it was maybe the fact that i thought it wasn't aimed towards my demographic and it was yeah movie that really surprised me that i didn't know that was going to be aimed to me i thought it was just for you know teenage girls who want to go and have a good cry was titanic i just didn't think that that was going to be a movie that appealed to me and i ended up loving it another movie like that, that again i thought it was gonna it was made for my sister not me was fried green tomatoes and we went to go oh, see I it love that movie. it's a great yeah. great movie cinderella this cinderella came out oh, that's great a call. great example yeah. of a modern one yeah because yeah. that movie was wonderful yeah. really fantastic all right folks that'll do it for us but listen this is the last movie talk of the year it is not the actual last show of the year we're doing because we got a jedi council coming at you tomorrow and Normally we put up Jedi Council like around four or five in the evening, Los Angeles time. We're actually gonna be putting up tomorrow in the normal movie talk time slot. So Jedi Council goes up early tomorrow, 2 p.m. East Coast time, 11 a.m. West Coast time. Keep your eyes open for that. Christian will not be there because we frankly don't need him. Uh, and he's he's doing some family stuff because it's the holidays. He's periscoping something. He's, right. he's gonna be somewhere right. periscoping something, but it's gonna be Mark Ellis, myself, and our very special guest, Mr. Kyle Newman is Woo-hoo. coming in, director of Fanboys, the, the recent Barely Legal, or Barely Lethal, I should say. Mm-hmm. Uh, they purposely did the plan word. So Kyle Newman's <laughs> going to be joining us. Who, trivia, Kyle Newman was actually on the very first episode of Jedi Council. When it was a miniseries. When it was just the miniseries like two years ago. Yeah. Um, so And he's coming back in, so it's going to be fun. Keep your eye open for that tomorrow. So don't forget, folks. Lots of great films playing out our friends over at AMC Theaters. Head on over to www.amctheaters.com for all of your theater showtime and, of course, your movie ticket information. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I want to thank the guys sitting at the table with me and thank them for a wonderful year here. First of all, sitting over here on my left, Mr. Mark Ellis. Mark, where can people find you online? Uh, You can find me at 5150 Ellis on Twitter and Instagram. 2016 is going to be a huge year for me touring. Off the top of my head, I know I'll be in Baltimore, Nashville, Indianapolis, Delaware, right off the bat. And tomorrow night, New Year's Eve, I actually have the honor of being at the world-famous comedy store on Sunset on stage ringing in the new year. So my set is at 1145. I might wear something spiffy, and I'm actually going to be on stage counting down. So if you guys want to come out, see a really good show with a lot of great comics. Check out the Comedy Store. Sitting over here on my right, Mr. Christian Harloff. Christian, where people find you? I will be watching your attempt at Jedi Council. <laughs> uh, um, I, uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm very your excited. Your faith in your guest <laughs> yes, is your weakness. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, your pitiful little band. I, I am very excited to be part of this crew. 2016 is going to be a really special year. Um, keep up to date with my Twitter here at, at Christian Harloff because I should have a pretty cool announcement over the next couple weeks. So please check that out. Um, and obviously watch Collider Jedi Council. Hashtag Collider Jedi Council. That's all I got. And of course, our lovely host today and this year, of course, Miss Ashley Mova. Ashley, where can people find you? On Twitter and on Instagram at Ashley Mova. Happy New Year, guys. <laughs> and uh, a special thanks to you guys. You guys have made this year. Um, I, I hate using this douchebaggy word, but epic. You made this year <laughs> epic uh, for us here. The the things we've been able to do together, you with us here on the team, and what you guys have made possible for us to do has been nothing short of just fan freaking tastic and amazing. And we uh, owe it all to you guys. Thank you so much for all your support. And hey, don't forget also, we're part of Collider now. So head on over, make sure you bookmark Collider.com. Website does a great job. All the writers over there do a great job keeping you up to date on everything in the world of television and movies. So make sure you bookmark Collider.com. You can follow me on uh, Facebook and on Twitter by simply following me at John Campia. You know, a lot of the announcements that we have about what's going on over here at Movie Talk, I'll announce first on my social media, so make sure you're following me there. And so, a special thanks to Jonathan and Dennis and Wendy behind the scenes, and of course, again, to you guys. We will be back again tomorrow for Jedi Council, and then we will see you in 2016. So until then, guys, bye-bye.
Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.